and above all always disturbed. <clears throat> Om Ajnana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurin Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shrishtam Manamapi Shachiputra Matva Sarupam Rupam Tas Yagrajam Rupuring Maturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Girivaramaho Radhika Matavasham Prapto Yasya Pratita Kripaya Shri Gurum Tam Natosmi Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Ataf Parikamalam Shri Gurun Vaishnavangs Shri Gurun Vaishnavangs Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghuna Tanvitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadhutam Burjana Sahitam Krishna Taitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakam Vitam Shri Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare First sentence Srila Prabhupada gives us in, his, in this purport is that the devotees of the Lord are always anxious for the spiritual improvement of the general public. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada wrote this while residing in Vrindavan prior to his coming to the Western world. Uh, but he was clearly writing it for the world, not just for his own time pass or for a few people here and there, but he had clearly from this uh, first canto purports that Srila Prabhupada penned in Vrindavan, we can understand that he had clearly in mind the uh, verse that he quoted in the preface, or one of the verses that he quoted in the preface, that Tadvag Visargov Janatagavi uh, that the on the other hand, this is in relation to the previous verse, which describes literature which is via some tirtam, a pilgrimage place for crows, so in comparison to that that literature which glorifies the Supreme Personality of Godhead, even if it is improperly composed, it is heard, chanted and accepted by Sadavaha, which in the translation to this verse, Srila Prabhupada translates as purified men who are thoroughly honest. <coughs> And the first line, Janatag Viplavaha. It is meant for bringing about a revolution in the misguided, uh, in, in the lives of a misguided population. That's how Srila Prabhupada translated this. Janata, people in general, Agha, sinful, Viplavaha, revolution. So Srila Prabhupada clearly had this idea in mind. And he sees that the sages at Naimesharanya, they also had that in mind. They were in Naimesharanya, in a very peaceful place. Even, well, it's a long time since I went to Naimesharanya, but when I went it was very peaceful. I'm not sure about now. There might be a shopping mall and discos and everything there now. We don't know. It's, but uh, when I went there, which was about 20 years ago, it was very peaceful. So we can imagine how peaceful it was 5,000 years ago. It's a very peaceful place, very suitable for spiritual realization. Srila Prabhupada said about Naimir Sharan, it's a very suitable place for spiritual realization. A uh, place that uh, spiritually minded people resort to. <coughs> so, um, they were there very peacefully. They could be just thinking how we can improve our own spiritual life, but they were concerned about others also. They asked Sutta Goswami about the essence of all these scriptures so that the people in general can be benefited, not just for themselves. So many Puranas prior to this, we'll find that Sutta is the speaker of so many Puranas, but 
at this point, the uh, Shonaka Adi Rishi, the, the sages in Naimasaranya headed by Shonaka, they wanted to know, okay, you told us so many things in the Shastra, but what is the essence of it and how can the people be benefited? How in Kali Yoga can people be benefited if their, their qualities are, these are bad qualities. Often we use the word quality to mean good quality, but it can also mean a bad quality. Just like we say to criticize, it is generally thought of as a bad term, but it can also mean a neutral term. Uh, so these are some of their qualities. Those uh, qualities are uh, more elaborately described in the twelfth canto of Bhagavatam, Sugadev speaking to Parikshit, and he sums it up, Kale dosha nidhe rajan. It's, he's, he says so many things about Kali Yoga that people will, Dampatye uh, biruchi hetur, people will marry out of love. Love marriages are mentioned in Shastra. Anyone wants to have a love marriage, they can say, well, it's in Shastra. <laughs> and, uh, Sutra, what, viprat vam sutra meva hi. As, uh, someone will be known as a vipra, twice born, simply because he has a thread on his uh, body, and so on and so on. There are so many descriptions there. Uh, and the conclusion, it's just an ocean of faults. It's just a horrible situation. So here in brief, it's given people who have short lives. Uh, they will be lazy. Manda can also mean dull-headed, dull, very dull, uh, misguided, unlucky, and above all, their mind is always disturbed. So the sages of Naimasharanya, they saw this, they could understand, and they wanted to know, how can, how, is there any way people can be benefited in this age? Uh, and Srila Prabhupada in the same mood, sitting very peacefully in Vrindavan. Vrindavan also used to be very peaceful. You wouldn't believe it now, even a short time ago. It used to be a very peaceful place. But uh, now it's become not peaceful. So Srila Prabhupada is living very peacefully in Vrindavan. But he was very anxious for the spiritual improvement of the general public, which is why he took up the task of writing a commentary on Bhagavatam, which is quite a task, giving elaborate purports to the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's, it's not a small-time job. It's something which might be considered a life, lifetime work. This uh, Edward C. Dimmock, anyone heard of him? He's mentioned sometimes in Prabhupada's books. He was the authority in the Western world on Gorya Vaishnavism uh, before even Prabhupada came to the West. It, wa it wasn't much of a subject. It wasn't much considered very important. So he had his lifetime work to translate Chaitanya Charitamrita without with, with little footnotes to explain a few things here and there. And even then he didn't finish it in his lifetime and it was finished off by one of his disciples, I guess you can call it. Uh, but Srila Prabhupada, this was his main service uh, for uh, his Guru Maharaj. He, at one time he said, when he established the Krishna Consciousness Movement, was traveling all over the world, preaching Krishna Consciousness, he, uh, he said that if he had to give up one of the two things, traveling and writing, then he'd, he'd give up the traveling because the writing that was ordered by his spiritual master. He took... He took this, that uh, when one librarian in Delhi suggested to him that instead of making Back to Godhead, of course he didn't completely stop Back to Godhead, but he, the librarian suggested if you make books, it will be, that will have a better overall effect. And he, Srila Prabhupada took it that his own spiritual master was speaking to him through this. So he, his books, especially his Srimad Bhagavatam, is his opus, you could say, or his most important work, a major work. Gita is introductory. We, we are not trying to uh, undermine the importance of Gita. The, Gita is 
infinitely important and Srimad Bhagavatam is also infinitely important. Uh, <coughs> but especially Srimad Bhagavatam in great detail, the science of God, Bhagavatam Vigyanam. And Srila Prabhupada wrote this first canto uh, with the idea that everything he needed to say, he said that everything he needed to say is there in the first canto and especially in the some of the later chapters when he talks about how Parikshit uh, chastised is the personality of Kali. He gives, Srila Prabhupada gives directions about how kings are needed. Democracy is foolish. We need strong kings who will punish the wrongdoers. At this time, um, within India, democracy was quite new. The people who had, uh, people who are growing up now, they take democracy to be the that's just the way it is. Uh, but Srila Prabhupada had grown up in a kingdom. As Britain, Britain ruled India by the empire. So there wasn't democracy. And there were kings all over India, kings and nawabs here and there, who were, anyway, it's the same as king, just in Urdu, that's all. Maharaj, Urdu. And... Uh, <laughs> and uh, the, the kings, it seems that the, the, they expected that they would just go on like that, and it seems that the people expected that India could be a kingdom. And actually, the, if anyone had been, uh, if any politician at that time, in 1947, had been astute and ambitious enough, they could have become a king, and people would have accepted it. There was the, because people had the idea there should be a king. They had no idea of democracy. It was something, it's come something completely foreign to Indian thought at that time. Now India has changed a lot. Uh, <clears throat> but Srila Prabhupada gave elaborate directions on, on in this first kind of purports about how there requires to be a king who is very strong, who punishes the wrongdoers, who, wrongdoers who upholds dharma, and when he went to the West, he also said that th this should be instituted. He didn't think that democracy, well, he called it demon crazy. He didn't think it was a good idea. Uh, that all the uh, People are all ignorant and they vote. Uh, what is their qualification to vote? Uh, Srila Prabhupada, he suddenly, not in his books, but in his conversations, you'll find that he said, the, the, edu, the college professor and the... Uh, the uh, rickshaw driver, they, they both have the same one vote. What is this nonsense system? So I, I suppose that not only Prabhupada said it at that time, it was a widely said thing. Um, so the point is that Srila Prabhupada, he wrote this uh, Bhagavatam, giving the science of God, but particularly in a manner for Janataga Viplavaha, for making a revolution in the impious life of a sinful population. And this uh, statement, the devotees of the Lord are always anxious for the spiritual improvement of the general public, we can feel in every, every line of Prabhupada's writing, this his anxiety for the spiritual improvement of the general public. In everything that Srila Prabhupada did, in his uh, anxiety, spiritual anxiety, to give Krishna consciousness to others, and not just to spread, but also in spiritual improvement. I sometimes get the impression that our movement, we, we want to increase it in the way that Christians and Muslims and communists, they want to increase their numbers, bring more and more people in. But we ha bring people in, but we also have the program for the spiritual improvement. Uh, we're not in competition with Osho and Sri Sri Ravi Shankar. We want to bring people in, but they haven't got anything to give them. But the spiritual improvement, a whole way of life, Vairagya Vidya, this uh, Nidja Bhakti Yoga, this... Uh, Bhakti Yoga enriched with uh, <clears throat> detachment from this world and knowledge, Bhagavat Tattva Vigyanam, knowledge of the science of God. So this mood we can feel, it, it, it's the 
pulsing through all the, all of Srila Prabhupada's Bhagavatam. It's as uh, academic scholars have pointed out that, well, actually many of them are very appreciative, but um, some say, well, it's not very academic. Where are the footnotes? If there aren't any footnotes, it can't be academic. Yes, Prabhupada's not academic. So, uh, some of Srila Prabhupada's disciples, to rectify this fault, have now uh, made an academic edition of part of Srimad Bhagavatam for the scholars, so that they will be pleased with it. Uh, uh, Srila Prabhupada wasn't, it, it, it's clearly he's not writing in, a, in an academic way to analyze uh, each point in a manner, a purely intellectual manner. It's not that Srila Prabhupada's writing is not intellectual. It, it doesn't lack intellectualism, but it's not intellectual for the sake of intellectualism. It's meant for the uplift of the people in general, and in particular, of course, those who take Krishna conscious very seriously. So we can see that Srila Prabhupada, he presented uh, his purports in a very uh, straightforward manner <clears throat> at a level uh, that is relevant to people in the modern world. Um, <clears throat> for instance, um, in the Gita commentary of Srila Vishnu Thakurat Thakur, there's a lot of discussion which is following the text of Gita on Nishkam, Karma Yoga, and all different nuances and stages of this. Srila Prabhupada doesn't touch it at all. It's quite uh, complex, this understanding. And Srila Prabhupada just, he just brought every verse to the point of Krishna consciousness, uh, which some people criticize him for. Let them criticize. Uh, <laughs> so, if, if we go to, I, I, I just read this purport recently. Again, of course, it wasn't the first time that I read it, and I was just struck how every line is it, it's piercing. It, it, if anyone reads this, who's who's not absolutely, completely dull like an animal. If they read it, they cannot but be struck with, with the power of Srila Prabhupada's words because it's, it's so true and it's, it's absolutely correct analysis. And it's not only pointing out what's wrong in the world, but also giving the solution from someone who knows what the solution in is and very anxious to communicate that. Uh, the people in general are not interested to understand such things. But Srila Prabhupada is very interested to communicate this. That is a prime symptom of his being a great pure devotee of the Lord. Already spiritually perfect. He doesn't have to do... Uh, he's not like us. We have to chant our rounds and try and control our minds so we can make spiritual advancement. We can understand Srila Prabhupada is already there. He's, he's sitting in Radha Damodar temple, writing this with all the samadhis there, Rupa Goswami samadhi, and he's right there with Rupa Goswami and all the acharyas. Uh, there was one anecdote, as I mentioned, that one disciple said to Srila Prabhupada that, oh, some, some people said that sometimes you used to talk personally with Rupa Goswami when you were at Radha. And Prabhupada said, yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada, he wasn't, he, he could have just been doing his bhajan and absorbed in the bliss of remembering Krishna living in Vrindavan, but he had this anxiety of how to uh, uplift the people. This is uh, in the mood of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is very anxious to deliver the fallen people 
of this age of Kali. So if we go through this purport, uh, we can see the uh, the, the, the straight uh, straightforwardness. This is the Sande Eva Sang Chindanti Manovya Sangam to be He. This is the quality of piercing words of the sadhus which smash the uh, mental concoctions. Uh, so this term Srila Prabhupada used is sense gratification. Anyone ever heard the term sense gratification before coming to Prabhupada's books? No, no one even, there's no concept of it. I mean, maybe in uh, psychology there's something like this, or uh, biology, the idea of fulfilling the sense. There may be some Buddhists and this and that. But uh, this, this term, sense gratification, no one really thinks about it, just like people don't think about breathing air. They just take it as normal. So that we are concerned with uh, joining the sen- uh, applying the senses to the objects of sense gratification and enjoying them. Uh, people just consider that's just completely normal. And uh, the secular society, especially, they take it that uh, all the discussions of morality and different political systems, this uh, this uh, utilitarianism, the great the the greatest good for the greatest number of people, it's all measured in terms of sense gratification. They have no clue that this sense gratification on which the whole society is based is not at all for our good. The real good can only come if we understand that sense gratification is not at all for our good. That we have to engage in Krishna consciousness. Uh, why the duration of life is shortened? Because people have irregular habits, insufficient, and not so much insufficient food, irregular habits, overeating, oversense gratification, over-dependence on another's mercy, and artificial standards of living sap the very vitality of human energy. This is Srila Prabhupada sitting in Vrindavan writing about this. He could have been writing about the pastimes of Krishna. Uh, he, he, Of course, he wanted to bring people to that, but... Uh, he has this and he wants to bring people to that. He's trying to explain to them, uh, trying to explain to the people in general that how your life is on the wrong track. Uh, this uh, pursuit of sense gratification will simply involve us in suffering. It's the trick of maya. Maya means illusion. Yehi sangsparsaja bhoga dukhayonaya evate. This is an amazing statement of Krishna, amazing to most of the population of the world, that that in which we seek pleasure, sense gratification, is actually the cause of distress. And people have no, they have no idea of this. If they think if something, they're trying for sense gratification, something goes wrong, bad luck. Bad luck, that's all. But it's, we are making our own bad luck by our, by being and again and again and again, Srila Prabhupada in the, he uses the term misguided. Uh, people are interestingly, Srila Prabhupada writes here. Um, oh, there's so many things. If we analyze it line by line, word by word, we'll find there's a whole, the whole of Prabhupada's social commentary is is uh, in here. Uh, People have no desire for self-realization. Even if they come to know about it, they unfortunately become victims of, of misguided teachers. That's a very interesting statement, misguided teachers. The teachers are misguiding. Why are they misguided? They themselves are misguided. It's a parampara of misguided people. <clears throat> and why have people have no desire for self-realization? Due to a bad system of education. If there's a proper system of education, then naturally people should be interested in self-realization. But there's a bad system of education in which 
the goal of life. It's not. No one states directly. At least in the colleges and in the classrooms, they don't state directly that you have to work hard and earn money, and that's all there is. But it's the underlying current that this educate. You have to have education, get ahead, and all this. Uh, there's no uh, self-realization. Is not considered important by by the lack of a total lack of uh, importance given to it. It's presumed that it's understood that it's unimportant. Self-realization is not important. And rather, the educational system instills in people. Just the opposite, the pursuit of, self, of sense gratification. Uh, so these, these purports are, this will make a revolution, is revolutionary. We can just imagine reading the Bhagavatam without Prabhupada's purpose. You won't, you will read this, Prayan al Sabya, you may get some translation. But how Srila Prabhupada unfolds it and brings it out for our understanding, uh, it it brings it from being what to us is a collection of statements to to a complete understanding of the situation. Uh, and another word Srila Prabhupada uses, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. human life is especially meant for self-realization. We hear, yeah, yeah, I heard that every day in class. Oh, yeah, but, but it, it's a shattering statement to most people. In the world, we hear it all the time, but most people, they never heard it in their whole life. They have no idea of this. Human life is meant for self Why human life? They, what do you mean human life? life? We're humans. Why do you say human life? Obviously, we're human. They don't have any idea that we are going from body to body to body. And that this life is meant for self-realization. And what is that? Man should come to know what he is, what the world is, and what the supreme truth is. There you have that's a whole Bhagavad Gita summarized in three clauses. But due to but people have no interest in this. So uh, Srila Prabhupada is uh, by these straightforward words is uh, wake, waking people up. Uh, why now? Why are people how? Why, why do they have no interest in this? Because they're victims. Everyone is a victim. <clears throat> um, in Hindi, we'd say for victim, Sika, is that right? Shika, yeah. That means someone who's hunted or something that's hunted. The English word victim is a, is a little different. It may not imply necessarily hunting, but I thought that's a good idea to bring in, that that uh, people who become victims, it's as if they're hunted. These gurus go out in the world and they're looking for someone to exploit. And they might even think they're doing good for others. They might even think that. Because they themselves are misguided. They're, they're misguided into thinking that what doing good for others, that means if I can exploit them, I'm doing them good. Because their whole wiring, mental wiring, is all so strange. Because they don't have knowledge of the absolute truth of Krishna. So they must have the exploitive mentality. And there's either the, the mentality of service or the mentality of exploitation. Those who are not in a position to exploit, then they think how to survive. Survival of the fittest. <laughs> but then when they get in the position where they can exploit, then they'll do so. Therefore it said, power corrupts. Someone may seem to be very humble. They're very humble just to survive. Because there's someone powerful is on top of them, so they're very humble. They don't present any opposition because otherwise they, they know they'll be smashed. Uh, but then when they get in a position of authority, then, then you can see their actual, their, their so-called humility is not humility at all. 
I read in some dictionary of quotes, I can't remember who said it, that uh, we, can act, we can understand a person's actual character by how they behave with people from whom they have nothing whatsoever to gain. Good observation, huh? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, generally people will neglect others or if they have the opportunity, they'll exploit them. They'll use them. So you may say, well, no, the gurus, uh, what's wrong with them? But, but they're, they may also explain because they engage others in promoting themselves. And uh, in this way they exploit others. They pose as well-wishers of others. But their main aim is to boost their own ego, or even to become boosted, or even to be known as a great spiritual personality, or as, or as a great saintly person, or helper of the poor, or whatever. And they engage others to, in all these acts, so that they can advertise themselves as a great hero, a great pious person. So people become victims. Um, Srila Prabhupada writes, not only of different political creeds and parties, and become a victim of a political... Cre- uh, just like, for instance, this Marxism has been a, 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 tremendously influential. And even though communism is more or less booted out, if it was ever really there, uh, in terms of what Marx presented, but uh, its influence is still very powerful <clears throat> in the world. The... Uh, the uh, Soviets had a plan to infiltrate Marxist philosophy into the colleges and universities in America. Now, communism collapsed, the USSR collapsed. But the influence is still going on. We'll find in the, uh, in the, the academia in the Western countries is all, all influenced by Marxism. And it's in India also. All the big scholars in this... Uh, in, uh, in the English speaking, in, in the subjects like history and sociology, political science, they're all Marxists. At, uh, at uh, what's that, JNU? They're all Marxists. They're all leftists. So, uh, and out of that comes feminism and uh, all, all equal. And it's, or they, it's all meant to undermine the, the whole society and make them weak. And so it's going on with its influence. But people becoming victims of this, because it sounds very good. All equal. It's so wonderful. Everyone should be the same. All equal. Uh, as a kid, I remember reading a, a story for children, <laughs> which was uh, written, it must have been 1920s, but it was still popular at that time. It's probably banned now, because the attitudes people have in the 1920s are not politically correct in our Marxist-influenced modern age. So, uh, it tells the story of William. William, there's a whole series of books called William. William does this, William does that. So, uh, he is from a middle-class family and then his elder brother becomes a Bolshevik because that was quite popular at the time that young, educated people would become what they call themselves Bolsheviks, or what we now know as communists. There were two parties, but the Bolsheviks uh, prevailed by killing all the, what were the other ones called? Mensheviks or something like that. So his brother his, goes going to different groups and giving lectures on how we have to share everything, everyone should have the same... Uh, and then uh, William takes his expensive camera which in those days hardly anyone had and messes it all up and his brother is all, all very upset with him he said well you said we, everyone should share everything and <laughs> that was the end of his Bolshevik he never went and gave any more lectures on that so anti-communism through children's stories but people become victims of different political creeds and parties at the ideological level and then at the uh, st- 
ball level or the gross level cinemas sports gambling i mean these are very influential on this cinema is very very influential people get so when this uh, movie came out oh my god so uh, all of a sudden people became atheists just by saying a hindi movie with an english name um, very influential in my in the course i just recently i've been doing this uh, women masters or mothers during the and i'd made a statement in there that uh, talking about traditional indian society the barber he didn't have any insp- he, he was just a barber that's all and he didn't have any aspiration to be a bollywood star so then i thought well maybe i should look that up so i looked it up on the internet there was no bollywood pre 1947 but there were hindi movies so i left that statement out so uh the, I had a look on the Bollywood. It's been tremendous, tremendously influential. And then it's uh, it's uh, younger brother, the or the TV, or, or uh, it has the, the. I I I think that was you who told me you were doing book distribution in Rajasthan, and uh, at that time electrification was going on. Most of the villages were not electrified. and you this is in the 1980s and you could tell the difference when you went to distribute books in the villages that had electricity and those that didn't but by those who are watching tv and those that weren't tremendous difference and on the tv they deliberately put programs to uh destroy the character of people they show it as completely normal that a boy and a girl are living together without being married i remember this is going on when i was a kid in england and they there were songs i quoted one song in this women masters or mothers it was one of the biggest hits of all time in america and england uh i remember it as a kid that's why it came in my mind and i put it in there um please release me let me go how does the rest of it go let's not waste our lives to waste our lives would be a sin so release me and let me love again in other words you're married or you have some relationship with someone and you don't love them anymore so okay it would be a sin for me to remain with you when i don't love you so get out of here and i'll and i'll love someone else and this was a huge hit i also looked it up on the internet to get nowadays research means you look it up on the internet for for many things not for everything but uh it used to be you had to go to meet people and go to libraries and so many things uh <clears throat> so this was a uh, tremendously influential it was the own it was uh, the the only song that managed to keep the beatles ever from going to number 1 in the charts in england the their the song which came out of that song it was more popular than tremendously influential people think yeah that's right oh yeah well i don't love my wife mm yeah so i got to spend the rest of my life Okay well it would be sinful to live with her so I'll just love someone else What what is sin is sin is based on the understanding of what I like For me not to live my life in the way that I want to for my sense gratification is sinful Just completely the opposite of what it should be like human life is meant for tapasya to accept <coughs> uh, deliberate withdrawal from sense gratification so that one can develop a uh, higher consciousness ah uh, <coughs> yasmad brahma so tapo divyam putra ka yena satvam yasmad brahma so kam tvam tam this that one should perform tapasya so that one can develop spiritual consciousness but now sense gratification although in vala vidyanaga i saw one uh poster advertisement that uh tabago something like that in other words take on tapasya it was it was a uh it was a company what are they tutoring that okay you come to us and we'll drill you so this tapasya you accept this tapasya uh tap may lag jao something like that i can't remember 
So that idea, that, then you accept that. So that's the idea of, uh, you accept, this is Hiranyakashipu kind of tapasya. You accept some tapasya now, so you can enjoy more in future. Cinema, sports, I, I, again in India we've seen that there was no interest in tennis, football, badminton, golf. People have never heard of it, but just the, the media whipped it up. And then people are buying their golf shoes and betting on all these things. There was only cricket, that's all. And there are few people interested in uh, horse racing. In Calcutta they have the... Oh, and I saw one time we were driving by, they have these horses that look like... They look like they were left over from the British time. They, were just, you know, they didn't look like, like they could race at all, but they were the race horses. Poor old nags. Oh, and there was a little interest in football in Calcutta and Goa and Kerala. But, it was, but they made a huge thing. In, I was in Puri a few years ago, staying there during the summer for... Uh, I was doing research, Bhaktisiddhanta, Baiba. So I used to go to one hotel every day to get the internet. And I'd see the newspaper there. And one day I saw on the front page of the newspaper, the whole front page was taken up with some football match. Some, it was World Cup or something like that. Whereas the previous, uh, and, yeah, and then I, and I'm maybe harping on this a bit too long, but anyway, I'll just finish this. Another time, I remember I was in Calcutta, it must have been uh, about 1980 or something like this. And uh, I was looking at the newspaper, and then there were three lines in the paper that Argentina beat someone or someone in the World Cup final. And I thought, well, well where I come from, that would that would be... You know, people, people would stay up all night watching football, night after night. It still goes on. But here, here in India, it was three lines. Argentina beat someone or someone or someone in the World Cup final football. That was it. But now, now some, some, just even the beginning games, I don't even know if it was the World Cup, but the whole of the front page of the newspaper. So this is, victimizing people by making them take interest in something which has no real value just takes their attention away and, and people become completely absorbed in it and they'll, they'll go on talking about it and they'll save their money so they can fly off to watch their team lose in the World Cup because whatever it is almost all the teams lose. only one wins ultimately so everyone else is disappointed Gambling, mundane libraries, bad associations, smoking. They're, they're, they're smoking. It's, it's another thing. It's only promoted by advertisements. Smoking. Uh, people don't need to smoke, but they make some advertisement. Then you smoke, and then everyone smokes, and then, yeah. And, but it's a di 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 diversion. Drinking, cheating, pilfering. Bickering. Pilfering means petty theft. Just, if you get the chance, you can, you'll pick something up, take it. Bickering means some little argument over nothing. And just, all, if someone says something, you have to say something opposite to them. And like you, you can't, you go on arguing, you can't let them have the last word and go on and go on arguing about something going on and on and on. Their minds are always disturbed, full of anxieties due to so many different engagements in this age. Many unscrupulous men manufacture their own religious faiths, which are not based on any revealed scriptures. And very often people who are addicted to sense gratification are attracted by such institutions. Just exposing all these bogus religionists who are manufacturing religious faiths not based on any revealed scriptures. And people go to that because they're addicted to sense gratification. And uh, anyway, you can get it. Just in a, in a few words, Srila Prabhupada summarizes whole areas of cheating and 
misguiding and how people are spoiling their lives. Uh, sannyasis, what are you? sannyasis, uh, but they've never been properly trained as brahmacharis and grihastas, then what kind of sannyasis do they become? And Srila Prabhupada sum, summarizes it up. In the Kali Yuga, the whole atmosphere is surcharged with faithlessness. Or they have faith in the wrong thing, which also amounts to faithlessness. If you're not having faith, men are no longer interested in spiritual values. They may be interested in religion, but they're not interested in spiritual values. Which begins with as a non-interest in sense gratification. Then spiritual values can begin. Srila Prabhupada, one line. Material sense gratification is now the standard of civilization. There you are, the whole summary of everything in civilization. But it's, it's such a mistake. It's a total mistake. So the whole civilization, everything about it is mistaken because they take sense gratification to be the standard. Therefore, there's no hope for it. It's everything about it must be wrong because the whole aim is wrong. So, Srila Prabhupada saw the problems at the deepest level. There are many people who are analyzing how the uh, different politicians and their they're making problems in the world. But Prabhupada went to an even deeper level. The politician, yes, rascals. But then the citizens, they're also rascals. It's just that the, most of the politicians, they're just ordinary people who, with a combination of, uh, of uh, ambition and luck, they took a leadership position. Otherwise, you see, the leaders of the world, they were just... This Jimmy Carter was a peanut farmer and uh, Ronald Reagan was a Hollywood movie star who never really made it to the top. He was a B, B movie actor. And uh, what was Obama doing? He was an economics professor, something like that. What was it? Any, any idea? And uh, our previous, our previous uh, prime minister here in India, he was an economics professor. Present one is a professional politician. He's been in RSS and BJP. <coughs> so, uh, very ordinary people, and somehow they go up and they take the position, and people criticize them. But if they had the opportunity, they'd do the same thing also to uh, exploit others. So, these, uh, these books are very powerful distribution of these books is going to it's going to make a, a revolution especially our devotees if they live the life that's in these books people will read these books and they'll come and see where are the people who are living according to these books I f first read a book of Srila Prabhupada's in a country which at that time there was no ISKCON center there and I didn't understand very much about the book at all, but I understood there's something uh, substantial here. So I knew that the, I, I was living in Ireland, and I knew that the, there was an ISKCON center in, I didn't know the word ISKCON at the time, was in, in England. So I thought, well, I should go and see. I didn't expect to find that there are actually people living according to this. I was happily surprised to find that there were. Just, I'd read about Jesus and I thought, yeah, Jesus, he's great, but where, where is anyone like him? If I could find anyone like him, but there, there's no such person. You won't find any such person. So Srila Prabhupada, he, he made this International Society for Krishna Consciousness on the basis of these books of Shastra and particularly um, his presentation of Shastra. And it is the devotee's duty, or duty, as Srila Prabhupada would say, having learned the Scottish uh, pronunciation, to live according to these books so that people come, they read the book, they come and they put, yes, this is the same as this. 
what ideal I found in these books, I see it practically manifest here. And it's something that I can take part in also. I, when I, talking about myself again, sorry. <laughs> uh, when I first came to the temple, they said, uh, okay, you want to join? Okay, 16 rounds. There was no chant one round and then get a certificate and then come back six months later and then you chant two rounds and you get another... No. You know, 16 rounds. I thought, 16? 16 rounds. But then I looked all around me and I saw all these devotees and I thought, these people, they didn't come from Mars. They were ordinary people like me. If they can do it, I should be able to do it also. So... We have to uh, manifest, be living models. These centers, they should be models. They should be the Bhagavatam in, in practice. And the devotees book Bhagavatas. There's book Bhagavata and person Bhagavata. So that there's, there's the same. It's not that we have the book and then there's someone doing something in the name of the book, but it's not exactly the same thing. Should be so people can see this is the same, and then people will have such faith in that when they see that this, the uh, the knowledge that what Srila Prabhupada, the great pure devotee, with his great compassion for the fallen souls, what he has given, and this we find the same thing. Of course, we can't expect every devotee to be completely pure immediately, but that aim, that desire, that striving to live according to the Bhagavatam. And that will have its effect. And that's why we should, if at all we're going to have big temples like this, for this purpose, that people can come and experience the Bhagavatam, not just in some virtual reality, but in actual reality. Uh, that that we, we can and we should live like this. This, this is the way that we want to present Everyone should live that. This is the message of Bhagavatam. It's not that, well, yeah, we live like this, and if you want, you can also live like that. That's not that Bhagavatam doesn't speak like that. Bhagavatam speaks, Tapo devyam putraka yena sattvam yasmat shudyat brahmasar. You should do this. Not that, well, you do whatever you like, and it's all the same, and no, you should live your life like this. You have this rare human form of life. It is meant for God-realization. It is not meant for sense gratification. So live like this and you can experience God in this very life. Hare Krishna. I'll finish there. I thought I'd give a short class. I always think like that. but uh, Well, many times, but I didn't. So we should finish because we have meetings. Hare Krishna. All glories to his divine grace, Srila Prabhupada. Shri Shri Garnetai Kijai.